So we're here in uh, um, late February of 2024. Not 2023, 2024. <laughs> and uh, so this had a bunch of atmospheric rivers and lots and lots of water up in the Santa Clara watershed, which is which is where we are right here. So normally this is sealed off. So normally this sand is a big giant berm and you can see how tall it typically is. You know, it's on the order of three, four, five meters kind of thing, you know, solid sand dune. And so the water is contained within the estuary here. Historically, a lot of that flow is coming currently from the sewage treatment plant, the Ventura, uh, city of Ventura's sewage treatment plant, because the Freeman Diversion, which is 14 miles upriver from here, uh, deep, sucks that water out of the channel and we use it for groundwater recharge for the farmers and stuff in the Oxnard Plain. And so we only have surface flow when we have a lot of rain and we only have a breach when we have a lot, a lot of rain. And so that's what's happened here. So, so normally this would be here and the water would be all impounded behind this, this obstruction of sand, this plug, if you will, in the middle of the river. And the water would just slowly ooze through the sand and percolate through the sand to get to the ocean. But we'll obviously we have a big flow like this that pops it open so now we have a huge amount of uh, lenses, of freshwater lenses going out here. So from a conservation standpoint, there's all kinds of things, but a lot of critters that have evolved in this lagoon or in this estuary environment. Classically, that would be your tidewater gobies. You guys can talk to uh, Dr. Spees if you want to learn about those interesting critters, but other, other critters as well that deal with oftentimes hyper saline conditions. Um, and so now it's very, very fresh. So this is an example of the extreme version. So you go from summertime, hot, hot water, very, very salty, hard to live in, uh, sometimes shallow water. Now we have relatively deep water. Um, uh, the fall wig has been cut deep, so the middle of the, of the waterway is, is quite large and lots of volumes moving out, almost totally, if not purely fresh water. Um, and also sediment rich. Now it's lots of sediment. And so, so um, what it means is a lot of the critters here to persist, they have to have ways of dealing with these breaches, just like they have to have ways of uh, have had to evolve things of dealing uh, approaches to deal with the uh, summer conditions. So here, a lot of guys will go to the side. So a lot of the, the critters will will run the plants. The, the animals will, will will find refugia off the main flow, off the, the sides of the main channel, and do uh, and do their do. And the, one of the biggest management challenges we have uh, these days is this stuff has come in. So this is a rundo, and so a rundo, which is this um, non-native but uh, rhizominous grass, very, very fantastic plant, very, very cool, um, has invaded a lot of these areas. So these areas that might otherwise have been refugia for, for plants and, and other critters are now oftentimes a monoculture or close to a monoculture of this non-native uh, invader. Um, and so, uh, so we have, the, this is a great example of an invasive species, of, of humans messing with hydrology, of the evolution of all these critters to deal with these extreme environments. And so rarely do we get a really cool view like this with the mouth open where it's just pumping, but this is an important part. This is a really key part of the system. And what we don't appreciate is these unusual things are just as important as the steady state, the day-to-day -day events. This big open thing is a key part of the ecology of this system.